The signature of any broken anime ability is marked by its destructive capacity in tandem with the rare circumstances garnered to achieve such a feat. In My Hero Academia, we got Quirk Awakenings, in Boruto, we got Galaxy Level Copium, and with One Piece, we got something as grandiose as Gear 5, with Bonnie only replicating a snapshot of its power. And with a story like Jujutsu Kaisen, which has rapidly become the most popular shonen series in recent history, the mark of ultimate Jujutsu control Control is replicated in the devastating power of a Black Flash. Black Flashes are a stamp of peak cursed energy mastery, and I know we go crazy for domain expansions, which is basically this era's Bonkai, and rightfully so. Gojo's infinite backshots is an out of versal level feat. No one is safe behind Gojo, not even Goku, and that's why he's crowned as the Avatar, the last backbender. But Black Flashes are so insane because you can't control them. It's all instinct and luck, but the buffs that they give are so game-changing, it can turn someone from small Mario to big Giga Chat Mario after eating a mushroom. When a Black Flash is manifested, the user is able to enter the zone, maximizing 120% of their potential and lock in on the battle before them. It's like getting that ancient power buff from Pokemon, which has killed way too many of my Nuzlocke runs. Yuji Itadori, or rather Mr. Left Right Good Knight and the Prince of the Black Sparks, represents how transformative a Black Flash can be under his gauntlets. Cursed Energy Manipulation manipulation becomes an automatic reflex, every previous limitation holding him back is shattered, and he becomes an absolute monster. And that's why in this video, we're gonna break down every Black Flash user, talk about the situations that gave rise to this ability, and rank them in regards to the number of times they were able to land a blow successfully. Now coming in our 8th spot, we got our thorny rose Nobura Kugisaki, who's not only the youngest Black Flash user on this list, she's also the only girl. Towards the end of Season 1 of Jujutsu Kaisen, Nobura was able to sporadically tap in and unlock the potential of this power while she was battling against the death paintings with Itadori. Nobura was put into a situation where her and Itadori's lives were on the line, facing powerful opponents that exceeded their current power levels, and so they were forced to rise to the occasion where they go all in and all out. What's unique about Nobura's Black Flash manifestation is the fact that as she was fighting with Itadori, she was being directly inspired by his persistence. She understood that Itadori was suffering suffering through some extensive pain, but knowing his mindset, he would never stop fighting, and to follow his example, neither would she. And so in the heat of the moment, Nobro was able to lock in, deliver a lethal blow, which put her opponent, Ichizo, into a near-death state. But in this situation, I gotta give a lot of credit to Nobra. While Yuji had to be taught the usage of this technique, Nobra managed to learn it all by herself, which just goes to show that she was a complete genius when it comes to cursed energy application. Now, Nobra was only able to land one Black Flash in this instance, and as a sorcerer, she would sadly meet her unfortunate demise a couple months later in Shibuya. But the potential to meet the greatest peaks was always there, given enough time to foster her development. So although she's ranking the lowest on this list, it has nothing to do with her call to action, and everything to do with her untimely sacrifice. So shout out to Nobara, cause she really stood on business. In 7th, we got a bit of an interesting case, and that's special grade sorcerer, and a prodigy second only to Satoru Gojo, Yuta Kotsu. Now, I'm being a bit harsh on Yuta's case, and that's also because I'm holding him at a higher standard in contrast to the other Black Flash users on this list. Yuta Kotsu manifested his Black Flash in Volume 0, the precursor to the main events of JJK's story following Itadori. Yuta was fighting it out against Suguru Geto, of which in this battle, he pushed past his limits, leveled up, and struck him down with a devastating damage. Like Nobara, Yuta never formally learned the technique, but motivated by his rage and surging with courage cursed energy, he was able to tap in into his potential and power. Now, it's an interesting situation, because under his circumstances, Yuta's initial strike was supposed to be with his katana, but he was so overflowing with cursed energy, his sword shattered under the pressure. So instead, Yuta instinctively transferred that cursed energy into his fist, punching Gato and inadvertently earning him his first Black Flash. Now, the thing about Yuta is, like Gojo, he rarely fights in close quarters combat. His primary combat style is using his sword, intent, them with a storage of copied abilities. So from that aspect alone, the opportunity for him to manifest a Black Flash is already much lower than those like Nanami or Itadori because of the way that he fights. And that's why canonically, he's only produced the Black Sparks once in his entire Jujutsu career, meaning in this area, he actually gets outshot
shined by someone like Makito, who we'll be discussing later. Now, it's definitely possible that he's had some off-screen moments, because he was vacant from the main storyline for about a year, and he was with Miguel, so he probably had some chances. But because he stands above the rest, that's why I'm ranking him here, because I honestly expect more from him. Perhaps it's also true that there are very few people that are able to bring out this side of him, but even against Tsukuna, he wasn't able to lock in like this, and I feel like if Nobara stayed alive a bit longer, she probably could have. Next in our sixth spot, we got our favorite mad lad Chad Toto, who decided to flex his ingenuity by literally kicking his black flash into action and reserve his spots on this list. Similar to Nobara's case, it was Toto's inspiration from watching Itadori struggle and fight that he awakened to the black sparks. And so Toto showcased his growth slash persistence by using black flash to assault Makito, as he refused to be surpassed by his sworn brother Itadori. So when he locks in and shatters his limitations, he goes plus ultra on his case, and in an instant, his life flashes before his eyes, barraged by everything that he holds important to him. This includes his ideal type of woman, memories of him and Itadori that never actually happened, and of course, his beloved idol Takada-chan, which I can only assume is the true source of his latent power. Surprisingly, due to his relative inexperience with this technique, he wasn't able to seriously damage Makito, who was still able to retain the shape of his soul. And although Toto does boast impressive strength, his black flash was not nearly as powerful as Nanami and Itadori and the ones that they were able to summon. This was the only time he's been able to produce this ability, but the jury is still out on this one depending on the direction the Shinjuku showdown goes. So despite his limited experience, I'm still ranking him here because his delusions literally carried his potential and that's amazing. He may not have the same talent as Nobara or Yuta, but goddammit, no one measures up to Toto's brain rot and if nothing, that is pretty inspiring. Next in our fifth spot, we're shaking things up, introducing the curse among humans, Makito, who's the only curse who's been ever able to perform a black flash. Now, the really cool thing about Makito is the fact that his black flash awakening is directly related to his understanding of the true essence of his power. He was on this mental high by ridiculing and destroying Itadori's sanity by first killing Nanami and then Nobara not minutes after. And so, opening up to his decrepit nature and the darkness that persists within him, he strikes down Itadori with a black flash while reveling in every moment of his suffering. What's scarily impressive is that this isn't even the only one that he manifests. Makito summons two different black flashes during Shibuya in the span of a couple of minutes. The first one I just described, but the second one would happen later in his confrontation with Toto, where after he was sent reeling from his idol transfiguration, he doubles down with black flash number two. It really puts it into perspective just how dangerous of a curse that Makito was, as his instinctual understanding of cursed energy rivals every JJK top tier. We'll be discussing Gojo a bit later, but there is a genuine argument that his understanding was so proficient, he may have been a better Black Flash user than him, and he could have been the best of the best if he didn't get devoured by Kenjaku. It's this reason why he serves as a dynamic parallel to Itadori, because they're the only ones capable of manifesting Black Flashes on the go as if they're making their own luck themselves. Now, we could also put Nanami in this discussion, but I'm making the conscious choice to leave him out just because Yuji and Makito's quick adaptation to this power is largely unrivaled. Although he only performed two in his limited lifespan, just the fact that it happened so quickly with such destruction, we really gotta give credit where credit is due. Next up in our fourth spot, we got a real goat and a role model to many, Kento Nanami. Nanami has canonically performed a Black Flash four times, but he did it consecutively in one battle, and this is something even Gojo was unable to accomplish. Nanami is a very humble person, and believes that using Black Flash consecutive times isn't anything to celebrate. According to him, after using a Black Flash more than once, doing so repeatedly becomes a much easier task. Nanami is actually the one who compared Black Flash to being in the zone, the state that professionals and elites focus and feel from being at the center of everything. Nanami's four consecutive Black Flashes were against the cursed spirits during the night parade of 100 demons in Kyoto, before Itadori would later rip away that record in Shinjuku. But despite reaching this prestige, Nanami accredits it to just getting lucky, which is so like Nanami. And for all intents and purposes, he might be right, but I always believe that luck is a combination of preparation meeting opportunity, so if nothing else, it's really due to his own skill set. But reading into the context of Nanami's words and the situations that gave rise to his black flashes, I'm under the impression that his total is much higher than four. Just going off his battle style and his experience as a sorcerer, he would have a lot more opportunities to enter the zone than someone like Gojo. Nanami is also an earnest person, so this holds some weight as his mindset is a key factor for black flashes to manifest. Given the type of person that he is, it makes sense why he had such an affinity to the Black Sparks, and he undeniably deserves his respect. Next in our third spot, we got our favorite 
egotistical maniac with glowing blue eyes, Satoru Gojo. And now what's interesting about Gojo is that the total amount of black flashes that he's done is kind of unknown. Gojo managed to perform a black flash for the first time before the 2018 Kyoto Goodwill event, despite reigning as the strongest for several years. Even though he maintains overwhelming power and proficiency with cursed energy manipulation, even he is unable to use this ability at will. While he never beat Nanami's record of four consecutive black flashes, he has landed more black flashes in total, although the number itself is never explicitly stated. In the Shinjuku showdown alone, he managed to use black flash a total of four times, once against Tsukuna during their battle, dealing a devastating strike when the King of Curses least expected it. And then he went on to use black flash another three times against his Shikigami safety nets, with each one obliterating his opponents. Now, in contrast to the other contenders on this list, Gojo has a much more difficult time manifesting black flashes than those like Itadori, Nanami, and even Mahito. Whether that be due to his infinity or six eyes is still relatively unknown, but it's mostly because his battles finish too quickly to even give him the opportunity to test it out. Gojo rarely fights in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He has so many overpowered moves in his arsenal, and each one doesn't require physical blows. So on this list, Gojo is in a very unique position. He has the most battle experience, but no opportunities to push his limits, meaning he's rarely ever in the zone. And because of his combat style and the overall inconsistency with the summoning of a black flash, that's why he's only ranked in the third spot. Next up in our second spot, we got the King of Curses, Sukuna. And despite being the strongest in the verse, this is actually an area that he doesn't rank number one in. Sukuna is great at many things, most of them coming from his personal playbook of decimating his enemies, but black flashes is definitely one of the things he excels in. Now, as the king and someone who has existed for over 1,000 years, like Gojo, we don't have a legitimate count of how many times he's manifested a black flash. Currently in Shinjuku, he's done a total of five, with two of them inflicted on Maki, and she still stood her ground, which is pretty damn impressive. But knowing Sukuna's battle-hungry tendencies, his capacity to bring about the greatest strengths in his opponents, and the fact that he comes from the exceptionally chaotic Heian era, he's had more opportunities than anyone else to enter the zone. This also works to his advantage because his battle style and body fits the bill for consistently using a black flash, with a physical approach to his engagements on top of the extra arms. While the other users on this list were able to summon the black sparks due to a moment of inspiration, stress, or pressure, Sukuna brings about his black flashes when he's reveling in the battle. It's probably a similar case to Gojo, but Sukuna seems to have more control when it comes to turning his luck into reality. Because he's constantly sacrificing things in pursuit of greater strength, black flashes assist his mindset, creating this level of balance when he fights. That's why it's interesting that he never pulled one off against Gojo despite being the more proficient user. And because of this single limitation on top of some other things that I'll be discussing shortly, that's why Sukuna is only ranking second on this list. But ranking in first is the man of the hour, our prince blessed by the black sparks, Yuji Itadori. Itadori is one of the few people here who was actually taught how to harness curse energy to match his speed and strength, and that's a huge shout out to Toto. And thanks to his simple understanding, he was able to rise up, lock in like no one has done before, and manifest black flash after black flash like it's an automatic reflex. As I've said before, you can't control a black flash, you can't use them at will, it's all a matter of luck and timing and a bunch of other factors. And normally, that's always true, but Itadori is a special case because his mastery exceeds every understanding and breaks every rule. From the way that Itadori fights and his consistency in this area, it actually seems like he can control it. The black sparks don't choose who to bless, but Itadori is their monarch, like a fate-defying demon that directly inspires others to rise up to the occasion. And in less than a single year of becoming a Jujutsu sorcerer, Itadori has replicated a black flash 17 different times, breaking Nanami's record with eight consecutive all against Tsukuna. It's all due to his unshakable will, unbreakable soul, and the ability to struggle through the pain, which is why he's unrivaled under their sparks, and that's why he ranks number one on this list. Black flashes are an extraordinary part of the JJK power system. They're sporadic and dynamic moves that can change the game, shift the plot, and throw everyone for a loop. But what do you guys think? How would you rank this list, and what would you change, if anything at all? Let me know in the comments, and until then, I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good one, mad lads.